Greetings everyone. Today we're going to look at multi-stage amplifiers and direct coupling. It was mentioned in a preceding video that if we had an amplifier that was swamped in order to reduce distortion, the gain would go down. But we could compensate for that by adding extra stages beyond it and the product of the gains would wind up giving us uh, an appropriately large value. So the question then becomes, well, how precisely do we do that? Well, let's take a look at a basic circuit. So we'll start with a fairly simple common emitter amplifier over here. I'll make a little swamped circuit, bypass capacitor, positive power supply. Now normally you would go through a coupling capacitor to our load. Well what is the load? Right? This is our load. Um, that could be in a larger signal application, something like a loudspeaker. That would be a classical sort of a load. Um, but it could also represent the input impedance into another stage. So, I'm going to draw another amplifier right here, right next to this one. I'll use a different kind of bias on this. All right, little voltage divider bias. And here's the output for that. And we could just piggyback the power supply over here. Now what I'm saying here is, you know, normally we would have a capacitor out here that would go to into a, a, an appropriate source as a single stage amplifier. My point is that this resistor right here would represent the impedance looking into the second stage. So I can just deep six this, if you will and just connect this in, right? So you just imagine, okay, here's my completed circuit. So in order to do the analysis, we would first have to determine the second stage. In other words, find out what its input impedance is. And whatever this Z in happens to be, that is effectively the load that the first stage sees. So I would have to analyze this first in order to get that value, to get that Z in value, so I can determine what the gain of the first stage is. Now, in this configuration, both common emitter amplifiers, if we started with an input phase shift that looked like this, we know that this collector would have an antiphase. It would be flipped upside down, right? This amplifier would also invert, but it's inverting an inverted signal. So the load voltage out here would be back in phase with what we started with, right? So if we have an even number of stages, that's what's going to happen, okay? So basically, it boils down into two problems, okay? It's just that the um, load that the first stage sees happens to be the Zn of the second stage, okay? Now, I would like to go a step further with this. We're using a capacitor to couple in between these two stages. And the question would become, you know, if this was a large capacitor and it was an, uh, a polarized capacitor, we would have to determine which side was the plus side, which side was the minus side. And basically, that's simply done by determining what is this voltage, what is this voltage, DC. And then the more positive one would indicate, okay, that's where the plus sign is going to be for the capacitor. So if this was 10 volts and this was... Um, 8 volts, right? Plus side is going to be on this side of the capacitor rather than on this side. Great, fine, dandy. Well, here's, here's an, uh, an interesting idea for you to consider. What if, in the design of this circuit, it worked out that the DC voltage on this collector happened to be the same as the DC voltage on this base? In other words, what if Let's just say that's 10 volts DC. And the voltage divider is also set up to be 10 volts DC, all right, to bias this. Um, the question is then, well, what's the voltage across the capacitor? Well, the DC voltage across the cap is zero, in which case 
do we even need the capacitor? No. I mean, there's nothing to block, right? The whole reason why we have the capacitor there to begin with is to block the DC voltage from upsetting, uh, you know, the other stage. Well, if that's the case, if I've designed this to run on 10 volts, then I don't really need these two biasing resistors. And I don't need the capacitor either. So I could get rid of this, I can get rid of this, and I can get rid of this. In other words, we run this collector straight out into this base. All right, and uh, we call that direct coupling. Now, we have a few nice advantages on this with direct coupling. Uh, number one, obviously, we're removing some components, right? So it's going to be smaller. It's going to be less expensive. Those are good things. It's components that won't go bad, so to speak. Um, so perhaps reliability will go up a little bit. Uh, the other thing that we will see here is some increase in the voltage gain for the first stage because these resistors out here will reduce the input impedance of the second stage. And since that is the load for the first stage, by having a higher impedance, removing these, means I'll have a higher gain off of the first stage. So that's good too, right? Fewer components, less expensive, it's smaller, and we get more gain. So those are all nice things, right? It's uh, a nice sort of uh, construct. There is a practical problem with this, and that we can't just keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again. Um, what you notice here is, right, if this base is equal to this collector voltage, the DC, and I'm going to redraw this just a little bit. Here would be my first transistor. Make this a little bit more compact so we can see it. Here is the second transistor. Okay, I'm not going to draw everything out here. So this base is this collector. Okay? This base is this collector. Collector voltage in an NPN transistor has to be higher than the base. So whatever we had out here on the first base, this collector has to be higher. And this collector has to be higher than this base. And this base is this collector. So if we keep trying to do this, in other words, if I said, well, I'll get another stage in here, very quickly you run out of headroom, right? The collector keep, keeps going up in voltage. And pretty soon we're going to be at the power supply rail. And there's, you know, nothing left, so to speak. Well, there is a way around this, and that is through the use of the complement device. So instead of going into an NPN transistor, what if we go into a PNP transistor? All right, so I got my inner down here, I got the collector over here. All right. Now what happens? Well, I have some base voltage, the collector voltage has to be somewhat higher. This collector is this base, but this emitter is now 7 tenths above the uh, base, the original collector, and the collector of the second transistor is actually below. So now instead of this voltage constantly going up, 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 right, it goes up base to collector, then it goes from that collector base down to that collector, and we can kind of go like this back and forth. So you know, the next stage over here would be, if we were going to do this, would be another um, NPN. And if we were to just continue this, I this idea ad infinitum, you know, we would just keep doing this back and forth. Okay. So it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and off we go. All right. Um, if we're smart about this, we can actually get rid of all of the coupling capacitors. You know, um, on the front end, back here, um, if we design this properly, this, this DC voltage can be small enough to ignore. For many sources, we could hook up uh, directly without a capacitor. Now that's good because we don't have a lower frequency limit if there's no capacitors. Right? So very, very low frequencies or slowly evolving DC values could be amplified by such a device. And the output, it gets a little tricky. Um, there is one little thing we can do by taking advantage of a negative power supply. All right, so I'll just draw a negative power supply down here. 
Um, if I play the numbers right, we can get this point to come to zero because I have a positive voltage here and a negative voltage here. So um, if I have the appropriate resistor values and currents and such, it is possible. You know, let's say if this is like a you know, minus 15 volt power supply, if we bias this in such a way that the um, drop across this resistor is 15 volts as well, all right, so I got minus 15 volts over here, and the drop on this is 15 volts, then you rise minus to plus 15 volts from a negative 15, and your output is at zero volts DC, in which case we don't need an output coupling capacitor either. We just go right to the load. Save more components. Again, no low frequency uh, limitations. All good things. You have a nice circuit here, all directly coupled. Minimal components, actually, um, as we look at it. High gain, there's a lot of advantages to this. And we're going to revisit this in future work uh, when we look at things like operational amplifiers. Now, they'll exploit this direct coupling uh, scenario. Um, so you can see there's multiple ways of doing this. Right? But the basic idea is the second stage becomes the load for the first stage. A third stage becomes the load for a second stage. A fourth stage becomes the load for a third stage, and so on and so on and so on. So when we talk about something like, you know, what is the gain of the entire system? Well, it's the gain of stage one times the gain of stage two times the gain of stage three, and so on and so forth. The input impedance, on the other hand, is whatever the input impedance is of the first stage because the source only drives the first stage it doesn't directly drive the second stage it's the first stage that drives the second stage you could kind of think of this like a series of dominoes right you only need enough push to get the first domino to go because that's what hits the second right so the source only sees the input impedance of the first stage it doesn't for example, see the first stage in parallel with the second stage, in parallel with the third stage, and so forth. All right. So to recap, gain, we simply multiply the gains of the various stages together. The input impedance of the system is the input impedance of the first stage. And as you might guess, the output impedance is the output impedance of the last stage. Okay. So there we go.